by my father. My father, who was uh, 26 years with the Metro Dade Police Department, a homicide investigator, he retired in 1986. He went to law school, and right out of law school, he went and started doing criminal defense work on his own. Then he came up here and interviewed with Norm Wolfinger. Got an accept he, he got a job up here, but he did not accept it. He stayed down in Miami, and that's when we opened our, our front wire and wire when I got out of law school. So uh, it's not that... Uh, I wanted to go into the state attorney's office, but I saw a, a more valuable aspect of going into defense work. I actually did uh, civil civil work for about six years prior to doing, coming into the public defender's office. And the reason I went from Bud Stack's office was I was getting no court time whatsoever. We had one in two years, one case that went to trial in front of Vince Torby, and it settled right after jury selection. And I was quite disappointed in not being able to go through trial in that. but. Uh, so uh, I, would, I made that decision at that point. I, I wanted to be in the court more often. I wanted to have hands-on, be interacting with a lot more people. And the Public Defender's Office did that for me. I went to Indian River for two years, and then I came back up and interviewed with Blaze Tress and, and uh, James Russo, and they gave me a job up here. And I've enjoyed it ever since. It's, it's a job I love. 
can't say that I love all my clients, but I try to show them love, and I try to protect them, and uh, don't make any false promises to them. I just let them know that I'm not gonna let, you know, legal search and seizures get by me, and, you know, misconduct or prosecutorial misconduct. I'm gonna try to defend them and protect the Constitution as best I can. That's why I'm in the job that I love. Captain? Thank you, sir. Uh, out of the cur uh, current circuit judges, nation circuit, can you give examples of one or two circuit judges that you admire the way they run their courtroom? Well, both of them have uh, recently moved on. John, uh, John Harris, which one, who went to the 5th DCA, I, I respect the way he runs his courtroom. I've had very limited exposure with uh, Lisa Davidson, who I'm in front of right now, about a year and a half. In fact, my first court case in Brevard County was with Lisa Davidson on a divorce case. And she doesn't remember seeing me 20 years ago or 18 years ago, but she sees me every day now. Um, I like David Dugan has uh, a special quality when uh, dealing with criminal cases. He, he forces the attorneys, and the attorneys should always be open to the communication between each other, but he forces them to communicate in court, at docket sounding. Have you made an offer? Why haven't you made an offer? What have you considered this? So he gets that discussion going, and it's only about a two minute colloquy. And a lot of judges kind of miss that. They just say, Doc, sign, set it for trial, continuance, that's it. There's no real discussion in open court with prosecutors there, and your client who's incarcerated, who's been taking your word about what the prosecutor's been saying all along, gets to hear it from the prosecutor's mouth. And that's a very important dynamic for a client, a, a defendant in a courtroom who is not exposed to the judge in, in the state attorney every single day. So I would say David Dugan, uh, John Harris, I really respected, uh, I respect all the judges I've been in front of. I haven't been in front of all of them, but the ones that I have, I'm kind of, I'm put into a division. I'm in front of that judge for three years. So, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Donna? Nice to see you. Nice. Um, you mentioned all the things that have, uh, in your personal life, that have changed since the last time you came before us. Is there something that you can point to um, regarding a professional achievement since the last time you've been here? Professional achievement? Well, I have uh, three trials since last September. Two of them were acquittals. One was a life felony case, another second degree felony case. And the most recent one was a uh, failure to register a sex offender. Uh, we selected a jury, got into uh, first witness, and at that point the state made a different offer, was quite accepted. So I've been to trial three times in September. Uh, other than that, uh, nothing really other professional. I mean, when you're in the public defender's office, it's, it's put your head down, you know, hit the floor running, and, and just, you, you, you don't have an idle moment. <laughs> you really don't. Yeah. Hello, Mike. Hey, good morning. So, we have 11 people who are applicants here. Um, I'm assuming you're familiar with most of them? Uh, about half of the group, yeah. Now, we've got a pretty diverse group. We've got a magistrate, we've got a sitting judge, we've got people with criminal, civil, a wide variety of experiences. What distinguishes you from the crowd? Well, uh, 50 years, six years of experience on the earth. I was an auto mechanic, a farmer, a uh, lifeguard, a beach lifeguard. I ran my own business. I've been involved in civil work, immigration work. I did a bulk of my practice down in Miami was real estate and trust and wills and estate planning. And the past 18 years I've done criminal law. Now, I know we are heavy in the judiciary of state attorneys being appointed and elected. Uh, I think we need balance. I think we need balance. I think I would provide that balance to the judiciary. And I would bring empathy and, and concern and compassion to the courtroom. I think that would distinguish me from a lot of people. I mean, I have a, a lot of practical, I can, I can rebuild a motor, I can rebuild a transmission, I can fix a boat when it breaks down, I can, I can grow vegetables, I can you know, grow tobacco, I can raise dairy cattle, a lot of things. I mean, I have a multitude of experiences in my life. Um, so I think that distinguishes me from a lot of people. David? I love all those experiences. That's awesome stuff. How do you think it translates to being a judge? Well, I think you uh, meet a multitude and diverse group of people uh, when you're as a judge. And you have to be able to experience, I mean, 
you don't have to have had the same experiences, but it, it, it helps if you can have some type of compassion, understanding or empathy for them. As, a, as an early child, at age four, my parents were divorced, but my father and my mother both stayed in their life, my life. I was an only child. My father would be married, so I have a step family, three brother, or two, a brother and two stepsisters. And my wife, when I married my wife uh, 18 years ago, that brought in half of the United States. I mean, she has five siblings and just so many different people. So I had that experience. I have uh, my mechanical experience, my grandparents. Uh, my father was 82nd Airborne. My mother's boyfriend is still alive at age 86. Is a retired naval and internal affairs homicide investigator from Bay County. And uh, this, those are the type of things that you know, my life experience brings. I fish, I golf, I uh, have two children, 10 and 12. I'm fully involved in baseball and soccer. And our weekends are just stacked between soccer matches, baseball, and, and the other events for the kids. It's all about the kids now. That's my existence about my, my children and my life. Thank you. Good seeing you again. Thank you so much. Uh, assuming that you get appointed to the uh, critical bench uh, to go up and the uh, governor pray uh, to uh, become the next judge, is there one thing above all others that you would like to try and do in your courtroom to, uh, to make the system even better? And if so, what would that be? I would like to foster communication The more seasoned state attorneys and the more seasoned defense attorneys, they know how to communicate. But when you get someone who's new, and it's just very difficult to open up this communication avenues. You know, phone calls, so easy to make. It, it's, it's five digits on my phone in the state attorney's office. It's a direct line. They don't like it, a direct line in their office, but I get it. I try to teach the other attorneys how to deal with that. I would like to see cases at least will down to where you're in a negotiation posture. It's not, you know, an outrageous offer or, you know, defense counsel at the same time served on everything. But uh, I'd like to see a lot more communication from the council. I think that would help relieve the docket pressure in Burlock County. I think it would uh, help resolve a lot of things and, and have a lot of other things. My experience is when you file liens and you go to trial, that day when jury's marching in, you're getting the offers you've been asking for for six, eight, ten months. You're getting the misdemeanor right down, you're getting the time service, you're getting the uh, offers that you know the state's case is compromised, either by bad witnesses or a terrible victim or whatever case. And you know the cases that are really bad and ones that have to go to trial, have to be tried, and people have to be held accountable for things they do. So I think communication would be one of the main things that would try to promote foster in the courtroom. Okay. Jeff, do I have any questions? Thank you. If, if you are nominated and you go up to Tallahassee or the governor's staff in the future you here, while they'll, they'll be adequately impressed by your dedication to your family and your life experience, the real question is with the outstanding competition that any uh, nominee is going to have here, uh, the, the substantive question is that your substantive trying to focus on why you above the balance of the applicants that we have. Uh, I think my courtroom experience uh, says it all. 72 jury trials, um, 18 years with PD's office, two different, never been uh, disciplined by the bar. I've had bar complaints by clients. I mean, that comes with territory as a public defender. Yeah. You get them. Uh, but uh, what distinguishes, I think my, my diverse background prior to even going into law school. I didn't, I know it's in my application. I was a research scientist for Sharon Plow as a chemist. I graduated the University of Florida, Go Gators. In 1980, and I went straight in, into uh, Sharon Plow, well, it was Key Pharmaceuticals and the Sharon Plow, and it was the national uh, pharmaceutical company. And I was promoted to senior research scientist within three years. So I have that background before I went into law school. 
and I traveled the United States with three of our chemists when we got laid off and were kind of forced to go to New Jersey and work or get a layoff package. I think my layoff package went through the college again. Michael, one thing, first of all, you're one of the most diverse applicants we've had every time you come before us, so I want to commend you for that. Are you under the assumption that this is going to be a criminal spot? Oh, no, absolutely not. But I, I, I see where the dock pressure, I see where the case load is in Brevard County. I can't speak for all the other counties. And I'm not assuming that it's a criminal. What, if, if you were on this side of the bench over here interviewing you, what concern, alleviate my concern? I mean, your whole life, your entire presentation today was focused on defendants and prosecutors and criminal and criminal and criminal. Right. You're dropped into a family division. Okay, you're sitting in a five-day family trial dealing with custody, you're dealing with alimony analysis, you're dealing with child support guidelines. You then have to do a ruling with you know, 50 findings of fact, 100 pieces of evidence. How are you going to address that when you're in almost your entirety of your legal experience has been in the courtroom? And so address that concern. All right, hey, going in, it would be a, a whole experience for me in a family courtroom, okay? That's why you have your clerk. You have the legal clerk. You Scott Ellis' sister. You have them in the courtroom for those tough legal decisions that you need to review. Wait, wait, wait. I, I'm not following that answer. Okay. The clerk? How is the clerk going to help you? The clerk, Monica Webson in our courtroom, she's been there for 38 years. She can't give you legal advice, but she can certainly tell you, you know, you need to sign your application. You need to sign certain things. But she can also say, Monica, get the legal clerk in here. We need somebody here to take notes, listen to the issues. And I'm not going to go entirely with what a legal clerk says, but I'm going to go with the research. And I'm going to go on my own, just like any other research project. I will take the research that's given to me by an intern or uh, OK. You meant the law clerk. You meant the attorney. Yeah. OK. I thought yeah, you meant the law clerk of the court. The, no, 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 not okay. the court. No, the law clerks can, can sit in there and. I understand. Yeah, I understand. So, so you recognize it would be a, a huge learning curve for someone that's been dealing with the volume of cases you've been dealing with, and sometimes that does not lend itself to being overly detail oriented at the public defender and making findings of fact and drafting final judgments. I, I mean, imagine draft motions, most of them are somewhat template motions, correct? So you recognize it would be a huge learning curve. Right. It would be a learning curve, but it's not something that I'm not experienced, not without experience. It's, it's just the experience is maybe 20 years remote. Uh, and I can't say it's like riding a bicycle because, you know, the bicycle has really evolved in the past 20 years. But uh, being a research scientist and research oriented, I would definitely go back to those roots and, and research and, and rely on the stare decisis, press law, and anything else. Thank you. Any follow-up questions? Andrew? Have Mike, if you were not appointed by Governor DeSantis, would you run for an open seat? I have decided not to run for an open seat. The reason being, I don't have the name notoriety in this county. You know, the, the only wire in this county is Ed Wire, who fishes out of Port Canaveral for Yellowfin Tuna. Down in Dade County, I would have the name recognition. I am not going to uh, spend the money it takes to run a campaign uh, successfully. I mean, I, I could put a few signs out, but I'm not going to get on name recognition. I don't have the Chicago's name. I don't have the silver name on it. Anymore. Do you know how long this seat, in other words, if you're appointed for Judge Rainwater's seat, do you know how long it is before you have to run for election? No, I don't, I don't know that time frame. But uh, I would be prepared to do it on the cross that bridge when it comes. It's, uh, it would be new to me, but I'm up, up for counties. Thank you. Any other follow-up questions? Once again, my pleasure seeing you. All right, thank you. Everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.